Morning, Myra. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, Myra, as a family therapist, I thought you might be a helpful person for me to chat to. We are conscious as family lawyers that sometimes what people do before um, really exploring their own feelings is instruct a family solicitor. Couples and families, I think, will be facing fresh challenges because of the lockdown, because of the virus, and we wondered whether family dynamics might have changed and whether you had any helpful insights or observations from your own practice as a therapist, which you could share with people. So we wanted just to, to look as well at how people could manage the transition from lockdown to non-lockdown in a constructive way, because I think some people have found lockdown challenging and they may well find their new circumstances as life changes again, challenging in a different way. So as a therapist, how, how do you think lockdowns affected families in Scotland? Well, that's a big question, really, isn't it? Because I think we're, we're all different. We're all sort of individuals with you know, different circumstances, different personalities, um, and in different relationships. So, um, or not in relationships, we can be alone sort of during lockdown. So I think there's you know, all the mitigating circumstances around your relationships, around poverty, around work, about your own personal coping strategies. You come into how people cope um, during lockdown. And I think it's gone in phases. I think initially there was very, we had very clear instructions. There was no ambiguity about what we had to do or how we had to do it. We had to stay home. And I think that was a bit of a novelty. Um, so people embraced that because the importance of that was driven home to them. Um, but I think as that has gone on, the reality of being locked down then hits in, doesn't it? You know, and um, as I say, that can affect you in different ways. So if you are an anxious person, your anxiety can increase you're at home, you're maybe alone, or you're with a partner who's not understanding your anxiety, who doesn't feel the same way as you. So you internalize that and, and heighten that anxiety. So it becomes more apparent and um, more stressful for you. These anxieties are generally fear-based and there's a lot of uncertainty just now. So fear and uncertainty tend to go hang, hand in hand. So the fear can escalate. Having somebody to talk to, somebody who is a trusted colleague, a trusted friend or a professional to talk to at that time is really, really important. The availability of that will have decreased. The privacy around talking to somebody has maybe decreased. So there's a lot of um, factors that can um, affect who we are and how we're coping with the virus. But I think there's a, there's always a parallel road. There's a, you know there's there's how well some people are finding their their coping, how they're reflecting into themselves and finding things about themselves that they really didn't know and and kind of applaud and really work on to to help them get through the virus as well so if somebody who is coping well or maybe is not coping so well or, or is exploring the changes that they they want to make can speak to a, a professional like myself, we can help them maneuver and really maintain those changes. Um, particularly when they come out of lockdown, it's about applying the, the changes into that, that, that wider world. So it sounds like you're, you're suggesting that maybe the, the changes that might happen in family units could be handled positively, which I think yes. would be shooting for some people. Yes, they, they definitely can. But I mean, we, we have got patterns in relationships that we fall into and there's triggers to those patterns and those patterns can be repeated. I think those patterns might be highlighted more when you are in lockdown and can escalate more. 
But if they're highlighted more and you think, I need to do something about this, then you can work out how to change those patterns, what the triggers are for those patterns, and what it is that you need to do, personal change to to influence the change in those patterns. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And do you think adult relationships may have shifted in the sense that people may find themselves wondering about separation more than they may have done had lockdown not happened? Definitely, yeah. I think there's, um, yeah, whether you're living together or living apart and you're in a relationship, it has been a very reflective time for relationships. And any problems that maybe were there Mm -hmm. have have escalated during this time. Um, That doesn't always need to be a bad thing. The fact that it's escalated is highlighting that there is a problem. Can we do something about this? If we can, how can we do it? I think when something is escalated, we, we, and and because we, I think we're living in a, a society that, um, is quite fearful because of the uncertainty and we're getting a lot of conflicting information now from different avenues that affects us, that sits inside us and affects every part of our, our, our world. So that uncertainty and with uncertainty is fear and the chemicals that are then produced through that fear are adrenaline and cortisol, the stress chemicals. So working with reducing Um, using your body to reduce those chemicals to bring you to a safer place to be able to explore the the areas of concern yeah sure and do you think family therapy could help people who are considering separation move forward in a more positive way yeah definitely I think even even if the situation is not too confrontational that they're you know, I think definitely family therapy can can help because, um, again, because of the dynamics in a relationship, there can be a dominant party, party a non-dominant party, or the party that's just, you know, I've just had enough of this, just let's get it over with. And then later down the line, the resentments that have maybe been built up are still there, they're undealt with. So even though it seems okay at the time, to come to family therapy and explore that anything that's maybe underlying that needs to be explored in a safe way, in a non-harmful way, is going to benefit the long-term relationship of the, the family and the dynamics within the family. But particularly if there's conflict there, it's about not storing that conflict, being able to look at it again safely and in a place that that feels safe and um, with respect to to be able to to deal with that conflict and solve it if if they can solving doesn't always mean the perfect resolution but it's maybe the resolution that works for that family And how do you think the lockdown is going to affect families in terms of financial arrangements and care arrangements? Do you think the transition is going to throw up more issues? Yeah, that's a again quite a loaded question, isn't it? You know, the the, the financial aspect of um, a separation is always important and within a relationship it's it's quite a powerful part of that relationship um and lockdown has created a lot of poverty and a lot of uncertainty for a lot of families so do they choose to stay together because they can't afford to to separate and then their mental health or their well-being and general health will suffer or, and and I think that's really very specific advice from someone like yourself or a financial advisor to be able to inform clients because there's a lot of myths around what mm-hmm. is available to them and they 
we can't do that or you know there'll be family members who dreadful things have happened to or family members who got the best deal ever and do you know so they need some clarity um, from professionals around particularly that the kind of financial aspect of how it's going to affect them and the family they also need a bit of support you know, you may have someone in the family who stayed at home, hasn't worked or has worked part time on on how they can begin to develop their um, own financial security and independence and build their confidence and support them and evidencing that they, they, they can build that confidence and build their self-esteem to become that independent person that they they need to be sort of during their separation and afterwards. And that's certainly one of the most rewarding things about what I do, seeing people just build their confidence, find solutions with help and and move forward in a happier way. Mm -hmm. Um, So if you had one piece of advice for somebody who was trying to weigh up next steps, what would it be? Uh, One piece of big question. You've, you've probably sort of gathered from now, I, I, I can talk quite a lot. Um, I th- <laughs> Me too. So one piece of advice is, is always difficult, but, you know, I think there's several words, I think, and, and if you listen to the words and then maybe define the words, so there would be several words I would, be, I would use, and th- that would be be considerate, be patient, be kind, respectful, and tolerant to yourself and to to each other. And to take each word and define what it means to you. Being patient will mean a different thing to you than it means to me. What what you know, so that you can begin to action those words rather than them just being words. Sure. That's really, really helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it is always a joy just to be part of, of the, the process of a more peaceful separation. So I'm happy to, to contribute. Thank you very much. My pleasure, Amanda. Thank you. Mm-hmm.